Defining Neo-Modernism, Historical and Cross-Disciplinary Understanding 1. Etymology and Conceptual Origins Neo-Modernism emerges from two core terms. Neo, derived from the Greek prefix neos, meaning new or recent, indicating a revived or modified form of something older. Modernism, rooted in the Latin modernus, derived from modo, meaning just now, referring to a focus on contemporary or recent thought, often emphasizing progress and rejection of traditional values. Thus, neo-modernism can be understood as a revival or adaptation of the intellectual currents of modernism, often reinterpreted to fit contemporary contexts while retaining some of the core tenets of its predecessor. 2. Historical Development and Key Examples 1. Classical Modernism, Late 19th-Early 20th Century Origins Modernism in Western thought began as a movement within the arts, literature, and philosophy in response to the dramatic social changes of the 19th century, industrialization, urbanization, secularization, and the horrors of World War I. It rejected the Victorian and Romantic ideals and sought to break away from traditional forms. Philosophical Modernism Philosophically, modernism sought to re-examine foundational beliefs in metaphysics, epistemology, and ethics. Figures like Nietzsche, Freud, and Kierkegaard questioned established moral orders, human autonomy, and divine authority, while philosophers like Hegel and later existentialists explored the nature of reality, subjectivity, and meaning. Modernism and Religion In the Catholic Church, Modernism took the form of theological innovations that sought to reconcile faith with modern knowledge, particularly in biblical criticism, historical studies, and the sciences. Modernist theologians often downplayed traditional dogmas, miracles, and the supernatural in favor of more symbolic or subjective interpretations of the faith. 2. Condemnation of Modernism in the Catholic Church Pacendi Dominici Gregis 1907 Pope Pius X condemned modernism in his encyclical as the synthesis of all heresies, critiquing its relativism, subjectivism, and skepticism toward ecclesiastical authority. He called for strict adherence to traditional church teaching and reinforced the role of the magisterium as the final interpreter of doctrine. The Oath Against Modernism, 1910 To suppress modernist tendencies, clerics were required to swear an oath rejecting modernist interpretations and affirming their commitment to traditional Catholic doctrines. 3. Neo-Modernism's Emergence, Mid-20th Century Onward Resurgence after WW2 Neo-Modernism arose in the aftermath of World War II, especially in response to the horrors of the war, the Holocaust, and the rise of existentialism. Thinkers began to adapt the earlier modernist critiques, this time in the context of post-war disillusionment with traditional values and institutions. Neo-modernism began to permeate philosophy, theology, art, and politics. Shift in Catholic Theology In the 1960s, neo-modernist thought influenced a generation of Catholic theologians. While earlier modernism was largely theological, neo-modernism engaged with socio-political questions, personal autonomy, and human rights, reshaping attitudes on morality, sexuality, and the interpretation of scripture and tradition. Gaudium et Spes and Nostra Aetate, key documents from the Second Vatican Council, 1962-1965, are often interpreted as reflecting neo-modernist shifts in Catholicism, favoring dialogue with the modern world, greater openness to other religions, and a focus on human dignity. Key figures. Thinkers like Karl Rahner and Eve Congar influenced neo-modernist theological tendencies, which emphasized the primacy of the human experience, personal conscience, and a more dynamic understanding of doctrine. Their work led to a more flexible interpretation of dogma, contributing to the post-conciliar reform movements. Recognizing Neo-Modernism in the Modern World 1. Characteristics Historical Consciousness Neo-Modernism reflects a heightened sense of historical change, emphasizing that doctrines and values evolve over time. It often encourages reinterpretation of tradition in light of contemporary insights, including scientific advancements and sociopolitical changes. Emphasis on Human Autonomy 
Neo-modernism is marked by a focus on personal conscience and individual rights. It prioritizes the subjective experience of faith and morality, often downplaying dogmatic formulations in favor of personal interpretations. Relativism and Pragmatism In a neo-modernist framework, truth is often seen as fluid and context-dependent, leading to relativism in moral and theological matters. Absolute truths are questioned, with an emphasis on pragmatic solutions that fit the needs of the contemporary world. 2. Key Examples in Theology and Religion Amoris Laetitia A recent example within the Catholic Church is the debate over Amoris Laetitia, 2016, particularly its approach to divorced and remarried Catholics. Critics argue that it represents a neo-modernist tendency, prioritizing pastoral care and personal conscience over adherence to long-standing doctrinal prohibitions. Ecumenism and Interreligious Dialogue Neo-modernism promotes dialogue between different faiths, often with the aim of finding common ground rather than asserting the superiority of one religion. This reflects a shift from the exclusivist stance of traditional theology to a more inclusive, pluralistic outlook. 3. Neo-Modernism in Art and Architecture Architecture Neo-Modernist architecture, like its predecessor, rejects historical styles in favor of sleek, minimalist designs. However, it often combines these modernist elements with sustainable practices and high-tech innovations, making it responsive to contemporary needs like environmental sustainability. Art and Literature In the art world, neo-modernism can be seen in movements that revisit the abstraction, fragmentation, and experimentation of early modernism while addressing contemporary themes like identity, consumerism, and globalization. It often reinterprets traditional art forms to question the boundaries between high and low culture. For Neo-Modernism in Politics and Society Postmodern Influence Neo-modernism overlaps with postmodernism in its skepticism toward grand narratives and absolute truths. However, unlike the playful or ironic tone of postmodernism, neo-modernism retains a commitment to progress and reform, often advocating for social justice, equality, and human rights. Secularization In the political realm, Neo-modernism is reflected in the increasing secularization of public life and institutions, where traditional religious values are reinterpreted or marginalized in favor of secular humanism and individual rights. 4. Recognition of Neo-modernism Key Indicators 1. Shift from doctrinal certainty to personal conscience. Neo-modernism tends to prioritize personal experiences and subjective interpretations over objective dogma, leading to a focus on conscience and contextual morality. 2. Reinterpretation of tradition. Look for reinterpretations of long-standing traditions and doctrines to fit contemporary ethical norms, often justified by emphasizing historical development or socio-political progress. 3. Ecumenism and Pluralism the tendency to find common ground across religious traditions and to accommodate other belief systems within a flexible theological framework. 4. Social justice focus. Neo-modernism often emphasizes issues of social justice, human dignity, and equality, positioning them as central to the mission of institutions, sometimes at the expense of traditional moral teachings. Conclusion Neo-modernism reflects the revival and adaptation of modernist principles across multiple disciplines. It represents a critical response to tradition, encouraging reinterpretation in light of contemporary values. In theology, neo-modernism challenges dogmatic rigidity, favoring a dynamic, pastoral approach, while in the broader culture, it shapes art, architecture, politics, and societal norms. Recognizing neo-modernism involves an awareness of its emphasis on human autonomy, historical consciousness, and the pursuit of justice, often in tension with traditional frameworks. Question. 
Is it a neo-modernist tendency in terms of religion to both hold the letter of a traditional doctrine, so you could say a creed or sign an oath, but at the same time get the core meaning, so all of the words you subscribe to mean something else in your understanding and teaching? Answer. Yes, the tendency you describe aligns with a key aspect of neo-modernism, particularly in the context of religion. This approach could be seen as holding to the letter of traditional doctrines, for example, assenting to creeds or taking oaths, while simultaneously altering the spirit or core meaning of those doctrines in practice and interpretation. Characteristics of this tendency in neo-modernism 1. Formal adherence with substantive alteration. Neo-modernist tendencies often involve an outward affirmation of traditional beliefs while subtly shifting their meanings. This could manifest as reciting a creed or oath while internally interpreting its words in a way that diverges from their historical or orthodox meanings. For example, someone may affirm belief in the resurrection but interpret it symbolically rather than as a literal event, or they might assent to traditional moral teachings while advocating for practices that contradict those teachings under the guise of pastoral sensitivity. 2. Reinterpretation of Language Neo-modernists may claim fidelity to doctrine but redefine key terms to align with modern sensibilities. Words like sin, salvation, grace, or God might be given new, more palatable interpretations that align with contemporary worldviews rather than traditional theological definitions. 3. Strategic Ambiguity The tendency you mention often relies on ambiguity. By using traditional language while holding different internal interpretations, the neo-modernist approach allows for a broader range of beliefs under the same formal structure. This allows for a kind of double loyalty, publicly professing adherence to orthodoxy while privately subscribing to modernist or progressive ideas. 4. Doctrinal Minimalism Neo-modernist tendencies may also involve a minimalist approach to doctrine, reducing complex theological concepts to their most basic or non-dogmatic interpretations. This preserves the form of traditional belief, but empties it of its theological depth and complexity, effectively gutting it of its original meaning. Historical Examples Modernism and Pacendi Dominici Gregis Pope Pius X's condemnation of modernism in Pacendi Dominici Gregis, 1907 specifically targeted this kind of duplicity. The encyclical warned of theologians who outwardly adhered to church teachings but internally undermined them by reinterpreting key doctrines through a modernist lens, thereby distorting their meaning. This was seen as an insidious threat because it preserved the appearance of orthodoxy while spreading heretical ideas. Vatican II and Post-Conciliar Ambiguities after Vatican II, some theologians and clergy maintained outward allegiance to the traditional creeds and oaths but reinterpreted many aspects of doctrine and practice in ways that significantly diverged from earlier teachings. For example, issues such as the interpretation of the Eucharist, marriage, or moral theology were reframed in ways that could appear to adhere to church teaching while effectively altering the underlying meaning. Conclusion this approach is indeed a hallmark of neo-modernist tendencies in religion, wherein the outward form and language of traditional doctrine are maintained while the internal interpretation undergoes significant alteration. This creates a form of theological and doctrinal hollowing out, where the structure of belief remains intact but its content is redefined, often in ways that align with contemporary cultural or philosophical trends rather than with historical orthodoxy. Question. So would you say that Pius X was condemning modernism with the condemnation of this duplicity or neo-modernism a hitch hadn't yet been named since modernism tended to present clear challenges to traditional teachings instead of reinterpretations? Answer. Pope Pius X's condemnation of modernism in Pacendi Dominici Gregis, 1907, was primarily aimed at modernism as it was understood at the time, a broad movement that presented clear challenges to traditional Catholic teachings. 
However, his condemnation also indirectly addressed the duplicity or subtle reinterpretation that would later become more characteristic of what we now call neo-modernism. Modernism during Pius X's era was more straightforward in its opposition to traditional teachings. Philosophical Modernism Modernists challenged metaphysical, epistemological, and moral foundations, often questioning the authority of the Church and its teachings. They tended to emphasize historical criticism, relativism, and a more secular approach to theology and scripture, which led them to openly question doctrines such as the divinity of Christ, the nature of miracles, and the authority of the papacy. Theological Modernism Modernist theologians often sought to reconcile Catholicism with modern science, historical critical methods, and philosophical developments like rationalism and subjectivism. This led to direct conflicts with the Church's teachings on revelation, dogma, and tradition. Pius X condemned modernism because it was openly and systematically attempting to undermine foundational Catholic doctrines. His concern was that modernists were using academic and intellectual tools to reframe Christianity in ways that were incompatible with its core beliefs. Though the term neo-modernism had not yet been coined, the duplicity that would later characterize it was already present in some aspects of modernism, which Pius X recognized and condemned. In Pacendi, he specifically warned against those who appeared to be faithful to church doctrine externally but were internally promoting ideas that subverted it. These individuals would appear orthodox outwardly. They would formally accept church teachings, attend mass, and even preach, but their internal beliefs and interpretations of doctrines were aligned with modernist principles. Subtly reinterpret doctrines. Instead of openly rejecting doctrines, they would reinterpret them in ways that made them compatible with modern philosophical trends. This reinterpretation was often done in a way that masked their true intentions, making it difficult for authorities to easily recognize the underlying heretical ideas. What differentiates neo-modernism from the modernism condemned by Pius X is the method and subtlety of the challenge. Neo-modernists often do not directly confront or reject traditional doctrines. Instead, they affirm the letter of the doctrine but reinterpret its meaning. This involves holding to the outward appearance of orthodoxy while gutting the doctrine of its traditional meaning. For example, they may affirm belief in the resurrection but interpret it as a purely spiritual or symbolic event rather than a historical and physical one. Emphasize pastoral approaches over doctrinal clarity— Neo-modernism often shifts the focus from clear doctrinal definitions to personal conscience and pastoral care, allowing for more flexibility in interpreting and applying teachings. Conclusion While Pius X was primarily responding to modernism in its more explicit form, his condemnation also laid the groundwork for opposing what would later be recognized as neo-modernism, the more subtle and ambiguous reinterpreting of doctrine that maintains an external appearance of orthodoxy while changing the internal meaning. The duplicity he condemned in modernist thinkers was an early manifestation of the tendency that neo-modernism would later exemplify more thoroughly. Thus, Pius X was indeed condemning the duplicity that would later characterize neo-modernism, even though at the time it was part of the broader modernist movement.